Well, man, I'm excited to be here. I'm battling a little bit of a cold today, so if I cough or lose my voice and have to drink some water, just forgive me. I'm excited about our series. Week one of a series we're calling Stretch. Everybody say Stretch. Stretch. We're getting ready to, to stretch. We're in a season of growth in our church. We just launched our third location. We're getting ready in uh, the end of the year, uh, or the beginning of next year, April to May timeframe, to launch our fourth location in Winter Park. And we are, we are stretching. You know, once a year, we expand our ability to reach and connect people. If you're new with us, we exist at Action Church to reach people where they are, and to connect them to everything God has for their life. And once a year, we, we, we pray, we seek God, and we expand our ability to do that through our expansion offering that we receive the second Sunday of December every single year. We're gearing up for that, but how many of you know that before you run a new race, maybe you're training for a half marathon, a marathon, maybe you're just training to get off the couch into a 5K, you, you, whatever you're doing, you need to stretch. If you go to the gym, you're gonna, you're gonna max out, you're gonna get a PR, you better stretch, you better mobilize, you better warm up a little bit or you're gonna tear something. And so what I wanna talk about today is, is as we get ready to prepare to give on December 10th, as we get ready to prepare to expand our ability to reach and connect people, we need to do some stretching. Like we need to limber up. Somebody first service asked me if I wore looser pants today so that I could stretch. No, 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 I'm not gonna stretch. I'm not gonna stretch on stage right now, but we need in our finances, in our faith, in our obedience to God, we're in a season where I really believe that we need to stretch. And as you walk out of all of our locations today, we've got some red rubber bands at every location. I'd love for you to grab one and just put it on for the rest of this year and just remind yourself that in this season, we're going to stretch. <laughs> Somebody earlier said, you want me to pop myself every time I spend money on the wrong thing. No, no, no. We'll talk about today. We're not talking about law or judgment or obligation. Just a simple reminder that this thing stretches. And in this season, we are going to stretch so to get ready to expand our ability. We're gonna study a, a theme verse for this series in Galatians chapter six. And it talks about this idea of not getting weary doing good. And what I want you to take from this, this series is where there's stretching, there's blessing. That when we stretch, we, we give God the opportunity. When we stretch our faith, when we stretch our obedience, and, and through this series practically, when we stretch our generosity, we give God the opportunity to bless us so we can be a blessing to others. On December 10th, I, I wanna remind you our, our theme verse for our expansion offering. Everything we give on December 10th at all of our locations will be given to our expansion offering and then everything online, the whole month of December, there's a drop down tab on our online giving that you can give as well. Here's the thing, verse Isaiah 54, verse two. It says, make your tent bigger, like expand it. The NLT says expand. Stretch it out and make it wider. It's supposed to grow. The church is supposed to grow. This is not a mega church mentality. Every church should be growing. Whether it's one, 10, 100, 1,000, we should be reaching people where they are and connecting them to everything God has for their life through the local church. We're called to stretch out and make it water. Do not hold back, like believe God for more, like, like test God and say, I'm not gonna hold back, I'm gonna stretch out as far as I can. Make the ropes longer and the stakes stronger because you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your children will take over nations that will, and will live again in cities that were once destroyed. I was praying this week that communities that were once destroyed, that relationships that were once destroyed, that lives that were once destroyed, through the generosity and through the reaching and connecting of Action Church would be made whole because our sons and daughters, the Holy Spirit's gonna inhabit the desolate and deserted and destructed cities. What if? We lived our life in such a way, we were so generous that we began to take back what the enemy has stolen. Yeah. Here's what Galatians says about stretching. It says, do not be fooled. You cannot cheat God. People harvest only what they plant. You can't harvest something that you don't plant. You can't get oranges from an apple tree, right? You just can't do it. Like as much as you try, as much as you stare at, as much as you pray, you're gonna harvest what you plant. If they plant to satisfy their sinful selves, their sinful selves will bring them to ruin. But if they plant to please the Spirit, 
they will receive eternal life from the Spirit. Verse nine, I love verse nine. One of, one of the verses I really think is for Action Church in this season. We must not become tired of doing good. You mean we're gonna keep doing Thanksgiving outreaches like every single year you're gonna ask us to give and to serve? Yes. You mean we're gonna keep providing Christmas for hundreds of families every single year? Yes. You mean the expansion offering is gonna come every single year where you challenge me to give over and above my tithe to expand our ability to reach and connect people? Yes. Because the Bible says clearly, do not get tired of doing what is good. Like, are we gonna keep doing it? Yes. We're gonna sleep in heaven. That was supposed to be funny. It was really funny at 9.15. <laughs> I had in my notes, they're gonna laugh. We'll have a moment. It'll be special. It wasn't. Save it for later, okay. Don't get tired of doing what is good. For at just the right time, it says this, you will receive a harvest of eternal life at the right time if you do not give up. Don't stop, don't stop uh, serving. Don't stop working in your marriage. Hey, parents, your kids are, are walking away right now and you feel like you just keep doing the right things. Keep doing the right things. You feel like you're on the cusp of, of breaking that, that, that sin struggle or that addiction that you're struggling with. Just keep doing the right things. Keep praying. Keep seeking God. Keep going to counseling. Just keep doing the right things for at just the right time. You're gonna reap a harvest if you don't give up. Keep doing the right things. In verse 10, when we have the opportunity to help anyone, we should do it. Let's stretch ourselves in this season so when God gives us the opportunity, we're stretched, we're warmed up, and we're ready to be used by God. I wanna ask you the question today, are you willing and able to do what God is calling you to do? Are you willing and able? A lot of times we're willing, but we're not able. We get this question every time we get on an airplane, right? If you sit in the emergency row, you get the question, sir, ma'am, are you willing and able to assist? I've been on a lot of airplanes lately and actually been watching some funny comedians and, and really getting some, some good material. How many of you just hate airline travel? It doesn't make sense, right? It's just, it's awful. How many of you have ever been to an airport? How many of you ever heard of an airplane? How many of you are not raising your hand no matter what I say? Couple on the back, got you, sir. You just became Pentecostal, right? <laughs> we also had that lady growing up. I grew up in a Baptist church, and just one lady, nobody raised their hand. They weren't, they weren't action church. They weren't a public display of faith type of church that I grew up in. She'd raise her hand, you knew the Holy Spirit was there. You're like, oh, he just entered. There he is. There he is. Just a little flick. There's the. That was hilarious. <laughs> Airplanes. Awful experiences. I'm on them way too much. And people. Man, people just lose their minds on an airplane. Like they really do. Like I fly Delta quite a bit and they have zones and they have zones so that you line up orderly and wait your turn to enter the plane. The person working for Delta will get on and say, we're about to begin boarding. Stay seated. We're gonna board zone by zone. It's all okay. We're not leaving without you. You have a ticket. And what comes out of the speakers, what they hear must be like, this is the last plane out of Vietnam. Like, get on the plane now. Go, go, go. Man, zone three will be knocking down zone two, will be cutting into zone one, and people are knocking over old ladies in a walker and stepping on kids. It is a crazy experience. And you have that guy that does that, that he, he goes and stands in the front of the line. You're like, are you premium? No. Are you sky priority? No, I'm zone three. I'm just waiting for them to call zone three. Well, sir, there's 300 of us that need to board before you get on there. And he gets on there, he fights his way on there, and he puts his overhead luggage in your spot. You know, the one that was designed for your seat. He's sitting at the back and he puts it in the first available spot stands there like nobody else exists. You all know that person? Come on, you all know that person? If you're not raising your hand, you are that person. And we all hate you. Just, uh, just obnoxious, oblivious. They're just standing there in the way. And you're like, sir, that's not gonna fit. Why are you shoving your futon in the overhead compartment? You're supposed to check that bag. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Then you finally get settled, maybe you pick your movie that you wanna watch, and depending on who you're sitting by is the movie, you know what I mean? If you know somebody, sometimes you're trying to sneak some movies on airplanes, nobody's ever been there before. I'm a pastor, I'm like, who's around? PG only, or can I go PG-13? I'm not real sure. Do I know anybody from action? So you pick your movie, you finally get your headphones in, and then the, the captain comes over the intercom and blows out both of your eardrums. Like, why is he so loud? 
And why does he never tell me anything that matters? He's like, hey, we're gonna take it up to about 33,000 feet. We're gonna go over Atlanta, take a left over Birmingham, up through Nashville, finally gonna arrive in Chicago. Like, yeah, I paid to get to Chicago. Thank you, Captain Obvious. I don't bother him. I don't go knock on the cockpit door, say I'm gonna go to the bathroom. And after I'm gonna have the peanuts. Thought about pretzels, but went with the peanuts. Not gonna have them all right now because it's such a big bag. <laughs> the thing I hate about flights is they say complimentary soft drinks and snacks. That's not complimentary, I paid $400. <laughs> when they come by, I grab the whole thing and just dump it in my bag. I paid for these. Go get some more. It's ridiculous. Here's the point. Sometimes you get lucky. If you're on Southwest, you get it on first. If you're on Delta, another airline, you, you book in advance, you pay a premium price, you get to sit in the exit row. And in the exit row, you go through this illustration that nobody ever listens to, which is super dangerous, by the way, if there ever was an emergency, because nobody's ever listened. And then they ask you, sir, ma'am, are you willing and able to assist? And in case of emergency, are you willing and able to assist the other passengers? Hey, Action Church, we're living in an emergency. There are people bound, destined. The destination on their airline ticket is an eternity in hell, apart from God. And the question I have for you today is we're sitting in the exit row. We have access to the door. We have all of the instructions. Are you willing and able to assist those that are going to their death and destruction? Are you willing and able? Are we willing? First thing I wanna get is the, the heart. Are we willing to help? Do we have a passion to help people? Paul says this in the book of Philippians. He says, God is working in you to make you willing and able to obey him. Are we willing to obey? Go in your Bibles to 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter six. And let's just read a few verses together and talk about the willingness to obey God and to serve other people. Verse 17 says, teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and to trust their money, which is so unreliable. You're like, who's he talking to, pastor? I'm not rich. Yes, you are. Like, we're all rich, right? In, in light of the world population, the poorest person at Action Church is, is rich. And I just need you to know if, if you don't feel very rich, if you've got more month than money, if you're going through anything and you call Action Church home, you faithfully serve and give and attend here, you're never alone. You have family that will help you. But we're rich. We're sitting in an air-conditioned building in padded seats. You probably drove here in a car. Heck, you probably have a house for your car. It's called a garage. <laughs> There's people that don't have houses and you have a house for your car, okay? We're rich. We're rich. It says, teach those who are rich to, to do some things different. Their trust should be in God, who richly gives us all we need. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Need for our enjoyment. Don't leave here in this series. Don't ever leave hearing the word of God when it comes to giving or, or finances and think that God didn't give you all good things for your enjoyment. It's in there. Like it's written, God gives us things we need and we should enjoy those. They should be rich or tell them to use their money to do good. We should be active. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need. Always being ready to share with others. By doing this, they'll be storing up for themselves treasure as a good foundation for the future so they may experience true life. I wanna talk about that term, being ready, that phrase, being ready. Are we willing, are we ready to give? You know, we shouldn't give under obligation. I hope that you never do at Action Church. I hope you never have before. I hope you never do that you feel obligated to give anything. It's not in there. In fact, the passage we're gonna study later in 2 Corinthians is that we should never feel obligated to give. In fact, we should not give under obligation. We should give because we have a why. And can I just tell you, if you don't have a why, don't give. Sounds crazy for the pastor to say, but I believe there should be a why. If you look around Action Church and you say, I don't, I don't know why I, I should give, I don't know what we're doing in the community, I don't know why, then don't give. I don't give because I have to, I give because I have a why. There are people that are ready to get off the plane and all I have to do is be willing 
and able to assist them. There's no obligation. When we give on December 10th, and I can't wait to articulate that later in the message, when we give, there's not gonna be any commitment cards. There's no pledges. There's no obligations. Because I believe the word of God speaks clearly that, that I'm called to lead this church and to cast vision with the accountability of our executive team and trustees and board of overseers. I set the path through the leading of the Holy Spirit and you set the pace. So if we wanna do it, let's do it together. If we don't, we'll wait. We're gonna accomplish it. We're gonna launch location five, six, seven through 10. We're gonna reach the nation. We're gonna reach people. We're gonna do it at the pace that you provide. You are the pace setter. I just set the path. Because there's a why that people are lost and dying and going to hell. We need a why. If you don't have one, steal some of mine. My why? 656 families get to celebrate Thanksgiving because of your generosity yesterday. That we, that we didn't just provide Thanksgiving, we prayed for every single one of them in their car. We gave them an invite to church. We said, we'll see you Sunday at Action Church. Over 150 more meals will be given to our local partners that we partner with in the community. 800 families, that's my why. My why is the family with four kids that walks over an hour to church in Sanford every single week, knowing knowing that we have something for them. That's my why. My why is the 50 plus student leaders that I sat with at our office a couple of weeks ago, listening to the best questions I've heard in a long time about reaching and connecting people because the next generation matters. That's my why. My why are the two communities in Uganda we're about to adopt with a, with a partner there and give thousands of dollars to single moms and their entrepreneurial ventures to really help revolutionize two whole communities, the home we're about to build for sex trafficking victims as they rehab and find Christ and find a new purpose. I have a why, and when I have a why, I don't have a have to, I get to give because I'm willing, I'm willing. My pastor, Pastor Chris Hodges says, when you lose your why, you lose your way. And so many of us have lost our way when it comes to our finances. We find more month than money. We find things to spend things on that don't matter in eternity because we've lost our why. We've forgotten that we're sitting in the emergency exit row and people are dying all around us. And the question I have for you today is are you willing to help them? Don't lose your way. Find your why. And let's help people find life together. Are you willing? Are you willing? You know, a lot of us are willing. I'm 33 now and I still play some sports. My mind, my mind still got it. My body don't got it no more. You know what I mean? Like, I got, I'm willing, but I'm not as able. Come on, guys, you know, you used to be good. The story, listen, you get worse and worse. What I found with guys is we get worse and worse, and the stories what we used to be get better and better. <laughs> Come on. Man, remember when I used to be? No, you didn't. You never did that. Surround yourself with friends that say that never happened. That never happened. We're willing, but are we able? And if you have a pulse and you go to our church, you're willing. Like you may not believe what we believe yet, that's fine, but you can't go to an outreach. I don't, take eternity out of it, you can't, but just if you want to, <laughs> so 800 people are gonna have a Thanksgiving meal, 800 families are gonna come together because of your generosity. Like you can't, you can't be here and be alive and not be willing. But the problem is a lot of us aren't able. We don't live our life in such a way that we're willing, but when it comes time to give to an expansion offering, when it comes time to give what, what God asks us to, we're just not able. So what I wanna help with us today in our last 15 or 20 minutes together is let's be willing, but let's also be able to do what God calls us to do. If you got your Bibles, let's go over to 2 Corinthians chapter nine. 2 Corinthians chapter nine, are we able to give. Let's start reading together in verse six. Verse six of 2 Corinthians chapter nine. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. Verse seven, here's what I wanna talk about first. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. No pressure, no obligation. Just a willingness 
and a decision. We must decide in our hearts. What I wanna talk about here, the first thing I want you to write down is that we need to tithe before anything else. We need to decide. Like we don't need to let circumstances dictate where our finances are gonna go. We need to decide in advance. And you may be in here today and you say, Pastor Justin, I don't believe in the tithe. That's the principle of the law. But it's not. Because before the law was even there, God commanded Abraham to give his first fruits, his best at the beginning. And the law was created and God gave us a standard for our finances. And then Jesus came to fulfill the law and basically said, give it all away. So if you don't like the law and you're a Christian, I would love to have have breakfast, lunch, or dinner with you. Meet you at 2 a.m. And how you're gonna foot the whole bill for the expansion offering. Come on. If you don't believe in the tithe, give it all. We'll take it. We'll help people. In Jesus' name. Thank you in advance. <laughs> but theologically speaking, the tithe is real. And it's, if you've never heard it before, it's 10% of your income. It's giving God the first 10%. Not waiting to see how the month goes. That's not it. And say, no, God, I, I'm giving it to you. I get the question all the time as I meet with people. Pastor Justin, I get the tithe. I'm good. 10%. Got it. Do I like tithe on gross or net? I always ask the question back to them. I don't know. Do you want to reap uh, reap gross or reap net? And it's always quiet when you talk about giving in church. (laughs) You're like, where's the money going? Like, what are you going to do? And it's been abused before. Can I just tell you, I'm not flying out of here on a helicopter. I drive a used used Honda. You're not paying my car payment. Like, we're all going to be okay. We're helping people because the tithe is biblical. You know, I found this week crazy. Looked it up. Tithe is actually spelled T-R-U-S-T. Wow, I never knew that. Trust. Because it's not about money. Like, that's what's so funny. Like, we think, God, God just wants my money. He created everything from nothing. You think your 10% gross or net's gonna help him any? No. He's not up there like, man, I really hope they come off that checkbook today. Like, I don't know what we're gonna do at Action Church. If they don't, I don't know, they've been given seven. If they don't give 10, Jesus, we may have to send you back right now. Like, I don't know how we're gonna keep this thing going. <laughs> just trust. It's just saying, God, I trust you more than anything else in the world. And it's trust when you put him first. You say, 10%, I can't do it. I, I'm not set up. That's fine. Just start today with something. 1%, half a percent, 2%. I'm telling you, it's not the amount, it's the heart in which you say, God, I trust you more than anything else in this world. Just trust him. And hey, Christian, if you're not a believer in here, I'm not talking to you just for a moment. Hey, Christian, if you don't trust God with your finances, with the very thing that, that, that controls and provides everything in your life, the central part of what it takes really to exist, What do you trust him with? God can't bless what you don't give him. So you just gotta trust him. I dare you. I had so many stories after the first service just talking, just practical stories. Not weird stories, not not God, not giving to get, just practical stories of obedience from just faithful people that said, Pastor, if the whole church would just get this, it doesn't make sense. I just need them to know that it worked for me. And we're talking about just working class, nine to five, just people that are trying to provide for their family. This is not for us. We're doing okay. The church is gonna go on. We're gonna reach and connect people in Jesus' name. The question is, are you gonna be a part of it? You gotta tithe before everything else. Secondly, is we need to live off of what we need. Let's read this in verse seven and then verse eight. We need to live off of what we need. Verse eight says, and God will generously provide all that you need. So after we decide to give, after we tithe, after we trust God, he's gonna give us all that we need. And back in Timothy, it says he gives us all we need, what? For our enjoyment, that this life is not meant to be miserable. Actually, in 2 Corinthians 8, it tells us, don't give it all away so that you're in need, but just give to those who need it. And then God will give you more so you can give more. Just real practical. I love the scriptures. And you will generously provide all that is needed. Here's where we live. This is where the day-to-day happens. But church, this is where most of us mess it up. A lot of us are tithing. 
But a lot of us aren't living with good stewardship principles. That's why Dave Ramsey's a millionaire. <laughs> because he's teaching us how to live. Financial Peace University, great, great, great concept. Crown Financial, great concept. Living off what we need. Because have you been like me? There's been seasons of plenty and there's been seasons of lack. Come on, college students at Oviedo. You know what lack is. Ramen noodles, six days a week. Been there. But see, here's the deal. There's harvest and then there's, there's planting. When you, when you harvest, you have plenty. But guess what happens every single year? You gotta go back and plant again. So we can't just rely on, on, on our income. We can't just rely on our savings. We got to rely on the Holy Spirit. We got to steward well so we can give. But I wanna submit to you today that in every season, we should look to be generous. And what I mean by that is we should live our lives in such a way that we always have extra to give to those in need. Whether you're going through a season of bonuses or a season of pay cuts, we can structure our life in such a way that we can be a blessing to other people. Here's what I wrote down, and I really think it'll help you if you get this. In times of plenty, save and share. In times of lack, we've just planted, we're in times where we don't have a lot of extra, save and prepare to be generous. Save and share or save and prepare, two different seasons, but the same mindset that I'm just gonna steward everything that God gives me so I can be a blessing to other people. We're gonna tithe, we're gonna live, and then thirdly, we're gonna give generously and God will be glorified. We're gonna give generously so that God can be glorified. Let's read this together, let's finish out in verse nine. As the scriptures say, actually go back just a little bit. Then, so after you've tithed, after you've, you've lived, then we get to this giving stage. Then we get to this generosity stage. The truth is, church, until we get through the first two, we're not generous. One of our core values here at Action Church is we are generous. Tithing is not generosity, it's obedience. Like December 10th, like don't rename your tithe and call it the expansion offering, that's not it. Sounds good, doesn't work. Because that's not trust. Trust is giving to God what is God's. For they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides the seed for the farmer and then the bread to eat. In the same way, he'll provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in, to, in you. So he's gonna give you more, but also give you a heart to give. Verse 11, then you'll be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. Our generosity should never leave or it should never leave us with the thanks. It should never lead people to, to be grateful for us. It should be, lead people to be grateful to God. That he gets all of the glory. That's when generosity begins. It's not a give to get. If you've ever heard that, it's not in the Bible. And can I just tell you, I watch the same people online and on TV, and I know this money thing's been abused. But can I just tell you today that if you're not tithing and you're not giving, that you don't get that excuse one day in eternity for God to say, why didn't you trust me? Just because somebody else abused it doesn't mean you should stop trusting God. Because God never abused it. And if you don't trust us, come pull up the hood. Come to the office, we'll give you our financials. We'll walk through it with you. Give you the number to one of our trustees that signs off on all of our obligations. We'll, we'll walk it through. If you don't trust us, hey, if we don't give you a why here, go somewhere else. You need God to have your finances. And if you don't trust me for whatever reason, that's okay. If you don't trust us, that's okay. Go somewhere else because I don't want you to walk through this life not trusting God. We gotta give. It's been a pillar or a core value of our church that we never ask the church to do anything that, that really that we're not willing to do. And I need you to know as we prepare this year for location number four and really just receiving some blessings from God that we did not expect. Hey, we were not looking for a new broadcast facility. We were not looking for 21 acres. God really just put it in our path. And as we prepared for that, we modeled this. I need you to know every single Monday, when we receive 
and before we deposit what you worship with your tithes and offerings, after we get that total, the first thing we do is we transfer 10% to our missions account. We tithe. 10% of everything given here immediately goes out the door, outside of these four walls, outside of the organization to help the body of Christ at large reach and connect people. We tithe before anything else. You know why? Because we're human. And if you leave it in there too long, you'll find another name for it. And it'll be good. Oh, we need to, no, no, no. We honor God with what's God's and we give away 10%. We've done that this year. Then the second part, we live off of what we need. We have a budget. We have margin. We have guidelines. We have ceilings for salaries and ceilings for obligations and, and, and minimums for giving away. We live off of what we need. And can I just report to you today, just celebrate with you, because of your extreme generosity and our systems and stewardship, that in the month of December, nothing to do with expansion, expansion offering, just tithes and offerings this year, you've given so sacrificially. God has grown our church so much that we're gonna give between 132 and $148,000 away just off the margin of your giving. Man, I hope Oviedo and Sanford are losing their minds right now. We're getting some golf claps here at Winter Springs, but thank you for your generosity, for what God, that means that all of our partners overseas and our local partnerships and our church planning network and church planners, we get to just say, just because, here's $2,000, here's $5,000, here's $10,000, because you gave, and when the increase came, we didn't spend it all, we stewarded it. We saved and we shared something in your personal finances and that just because you get a bonus or a raise doesn't mean you need to raise your standard of living. Begin to save and prepare so that you can share it appropriately so that people can be reached and connected to the gospel. So we've lived and now we're gonna give. And I'm believing on December 10th that, that God gave us a, a number to complete our projects specifically in Winter Park with frugality and stewardship and build a broadcast facility that can reach our city and we're believing that we're gonna receive $974,000 in the month of December. Can I tell you this? Somebody outside the church already gave $100,000 to the expansion Woo! offering. Already got $100,000 in one check. <laughs> and here's what we're gonna do. We're believing God for 974. I believe that's a number from God. But can I just tell you that I'm human? Anybody ever miss God before? Oh, just me? <laughs> Bunch of liars here at Winter Springs. You are lying and God knows it. Oh, you said 674, man, I was close. Here's what's gonna happen. If we get 974s going towards our projects, if we get less, guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna go back to step two. We're not gonna overspend, we're not gonna say no, God said no, we're gonna go back and we're gonna steward well what God gives us. We're gonna go back and replant, make some cuts, make some moves, move, move some stuff around and figure out how to stay in the season of reaching and connecting people while we save and prepare for what we thought God was gonna do. It's powerful. Here's what I believe is gonna happen. I believe God's gonna give us more. Just standing on Ephesians chapter three, verse 20, where God does immeasurably more, exceedingly abundantly more than we could ask or imagine. And can I just tell you that Every dollar over 974, we're gonna be generous and we're gonna give it away. No organizational moves, no projects, no locations, just generosity. When God gives us increase, we're gonna share generously with those that are in need. You don't go back and take what you lived up of, that's budgeted. Our tithe is budgeted, our increase in our tithe is budgeted. We're not moving that over to pay for projects. Now that's given to God. Can't rename things. We're just gonna faithfully live after we've tithed and then we're gonna give God the rest to him be the glory. Because we're sitting in the seats, church. The emergency row. One of our pastors reminded me this week, sitting in the emergency row, it's a privilege. You pay more for it. You gotta get on early. You get more leg room. You get to see everybody exit the plane in case of tragedy. There's a privilege and there's an obligation and there's a responsibility if we're sitting there to help people. Not an obligation to give, an obligation to help people. And the question's asked, are you willing and able? 
And on an airplane, you can't nod your head. You can't have your neighbor answer for you. You gotta give a verbal response. And as your pastor of Action Church, standing before you today, sitting in the exit row, and I'm asking you, in this emergency, not in case, it's happening. People are lost, dying, and going to hell. In this emergency, are you willing and are you able to assist? Either you're willing and able or you're in the way. My prayer is in this season, we'd stretch ourselves in such a way that we'd remove any selfish ambition, remove any, any areas that we're in the way. We give God access to everything, tithing, living, and giving. And saying, God, I'm gonna be willing, my heart's in the right place. I'm able, I've prepared myself. Use me for your glory. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We love you, Jesus. God, I thank you for these two passages of scripture. God, I thank you for how they personally convicted me and my family, our leadership team. God, I thank you that we're gonna approach things differently. God, we're gonna live differently. We're gonna stretch in some areas so that we can give generously to those that need. Thank you, God, for moments of inspiration, but God, thank you for moments of correction and conviction that lead us to change. I pray that today's message would be just that, that we leave inspired, some of us, to do more, and others of us, we leave convicted to do some things differently. Church, nobody's looking around right now at all of our locations. We say it all the time here, you can't give something away that you don't possess. And we've talked about putting God first in your finances. We've talked about trust today. But the most important thing you can do is trust God to be your personal Lord and Savior. The rest of the stuff is kind of just ancillary benefits to you getting the main thing right, and that's a relationship with Him. But that's what we're talking about. With all of our generosity, with everything, it's so that you, right there in your seat right now, can have a moment that changes your life and changes your eternity. Accepting Jesus, who lived a perfect life, died a sinner's death in your place, rose again three days later. If you say today, Justin, I want to stop struggling, to stop surviving on my own. I want to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. At all of our locations, you slip your hand up today. I want Jesus. For the first time, or maybe for the first time in a long time. Come on, I got a couple, two, three here. Come on, Oviedo, Sanford, raise them high. Locations are taking their service right now. Anybody else in here at Winter Springs? Say, I want a relationship with Jesus Christ. So proud of you. Man, best decision you'll ever make in your life. Put your hands down. Pray this in your heart as I pray it out loud. Say something like this. Say, God, I love you. And God, I thank you for saving me. I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I'm saved only by your grace. And I am confessing with my mouth and I'm believing in my heart that you are the Lord and I'm giving you that place today, complete and total control. God, have your way in my life. Now, God, I pray for all of us at Action Church. God, I pray that we would put you first. We're gonna be a church that tithes. God, we're gonna be a church that lives in such a way. We enjoy the things that you've given us. We have a ton of fun, but we set ourselves up in such a way that we're able to be a blessing to others and give generously so that you can be glorified. Let us get out of the way this week and let us assist people into a relationship with you. We love you. We praise you in this place. And everybody said amen and amen. Church, can we celebrate the three or four hands that went up? Come on, really celebrate them.